Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. This is a video on how to remove and install a dashboard on a Corsa E. Step by step, how I go through it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe, like, comment. Okay, so the dashboard. So basically there's a panel trim panel here which just pops off uh, this one actually came out i got it out on my fingers just carefully just tease it tease it tease it because they're just clipped in i've got some plastic trim tools so there's a screw there there's a screw there you know once you take those screws out then this is going to become loose and then this is going to come out and be unplugged um you know there's a screw there yeah, there's a screw there so that will then probably allow you to get out the instrument cluster um, the steering wheel needs to come off, these cowlings will all have to come off, uh, the glove box will have to come out, we'll get on, get some screws out, I'll do all that, do what, take up what screws I can and what I can see, obviously the trims, assuming this, yeah there's a hole, there's a screw there, so I'm going to get on and do that and then I'll come back, so this bit just pulls forward, I just grabbed hold of it, both sides with both hands and I literally just pulled it. And it just comes, it just came unclipped and then it's just tied in there's got a little crack in there you just need to push the little prongs in and then it'll pop out okay so i have an assortment of tools here trim clips plastic trim tools so i've undone those two screws and uh i carefully you just see in there just carefully push that down and then these popped out so these are popped out here and here it doesn't want to just come out so i'm assuming it just needs teasing okay so i had a look at the replacement dashboard and it does just clip in there's quite a heavy clip here and a heavy clip here um, I'm assuming this needs to come out. Yeah, it just pops out. So I just need to unplug that. Okay, so that's now off. The, the bane of my life, what I struggle with mostly, is clips, electrical clips. That one, you have to get in behind it with a pick and open that up to pull it off. Normally, you just push a tab. But why do they have to make it so difficult? I don't understand. It just does my nutting. Screw that. So I think I just need to get a bit brutal with it. Okay, you have to get proper brutal with that to pull it off. You can see these is little metal tangs that they slot into and these yeah you need to get a proper even force on this where these clips are and then literally pang it just comes off with a pop so who didn't who'd have thought it eh a well secured voxel so right i'm going to get all of these multi plugs off uh, undo the screws four screws there one there one there one there one there Right, so that's the radio out. It doesn't just want to slide out, so you have to give it a bit of a tug and it sort of pops out. Um, and then obviously you've got all your, all your electrical connections, all your tabs and stuff, all your stupid bloody things. Right, those two were a complete cockhead. Getting them out of there. You have to pull, you have to pull the red tabs out, which then allow you to push those tabs in. I had to push, you have to push in that pin and then I used a lever, I used a lever to lever up and pop it out and then it came out with a pop. Right, so in that hole under there is a eight mil bolt. So then you just, uh, that one just popped out. And I'll just pull off. these two, two screws and that will probably allow the instrument cluster to come out okay yeah you take out those 
those two screws and that piece just pulls, just clips out and just pulls off. And then we're left with two more screws. They all seem to be the same size. I don't normally do this with one hand. Right, so there you go, there's a connector on the back. That it looks like there's some kind of module here to slot it in. So this I'm assuming is going to stay with the car. I'm not sure yet. I did notice while I was looking that there's two screws there that oh, it's not coming off, so there's gonna be a screw there. Yeah, you've got to take those two screws out and then that just pops out. It looks like this panel is separate on the other dash, so this must unclip. I'll take those two screws out down there, and then this panel will probably flop away. And so those, yeah, those two bolts, they did come out of there. Unusually, they are, they do have a cross head in them, but they're, six is too small, seven is too big. To use a seven, 732s. That's what I used to get it out, because that's what I had. So that, this piece here, slots. Slots into there. So you push, that goes into that little slot. So you push that little tab in, and then it just comes down and it just pops out. These are wire fed. Um, there's wires and I'm not getting into that so hopefully I can just leave this in situ so I'm going to leave that for now and we'll work on getting the glove box out and getting this lower panel out right so that was relatively easy if but fiddly what you're looking for we've got these two little tabs okay so you need to push these either both at the same time which obviously you're not going to do so push one so what I did is I put my hand underneath the bottom because what was happening was if I pushed and pulled that end when I did this end that one would clip back in again so I just kept tension on there and then use the other hand and there's on the back of the steering wheel you've got these elongated slots that you can get to at the, each side so obviously the steering wheel's at an angle so I've done one at the top and then one at the bottom and I just kept even pressure on there and it, it, it done one and it popped I went the other and it popped I just used um, a pick and I just put it in there like so and I just leave you can hear it you can you know when you get it in there and you put it against those you can feel it and it pops out so that's off then so yeah you just carefully just with a pick just pull out that little orange connector and then literally I just got I just got the pick in there and then just literally just carefully tease it. It just came out easily. And then this one, there's a little tab there. You just push that little tab down. I put the steering wheel in a dead ahead position. Take the key out. Lock it. It may be that there is just one slightly larger spline than all the others. So you can only put it in, in one position. That's just the airbag off. So, He's dead, deady dead, dead. Lower panel, there's a screw up there. You can just fill a little hole there. There's a screw in there. And there's another one up in there. Okay, that piece comes off. Pop out. So that's that out. Just checking there's no sort of, you know, probably no hidden screws and stuff behind here. <laughs> Which there is. Let's see, slowly, slowly catchy monkey. Yeah. 
think yeah. That just pop us off of that. So when all these panels come off, you just need to make sure that all your clips are still intact. These things. So I'm gonna take the OBD port out. Probably just slides out. Yeah, there you go. So there's a screw under there. You can't see it, but there's a screw under there. I fill it back under. There's a screw under there, fill it with finger. There's a screw there, and there's a screw there. So yeah, the glove box does just pull out. Once you do those screws, you just have to just give it a tug. Again, it's got a few clips in it and stuff. Um, and then you've got your air airbag connector there. Just push that in. This piece on the side, that does just, you know, the way it went up. It, you have to peel back the rubber because it goes behind here. And it sort of comes out that way one screw here you take that off you unclip it and then you got a screw in there it's different screw so different torques than all the others of course it is um, so and then assuming there's no other fixings in it there's a screw in there I'm assuming this just pops out like that screw under there look Again, there's another screw. Okay, so I took the center console out. It doesn't look like there's any fixings in it. So I literally just popped it up. Um, got it up. And once I've got it out, I'll put my hand underneath and then just popped this out of it. And then you have to, this actually, this actually goes, this goes through it. And you have to put the, the gator through it like that to put it in so you have to fit that through and then that comes off like that and then there's a couple of connections for the auxiliary and the uh, usb connector okay so looking over the replacement dashboard just for fixings and things um it looks like you have to take the a pillar trims off because it looks like they slot because they stick up above it so it looks like you have to take those off both sides and notice there's a screw in there there's one in there you've got one either side there and the other side which i've seen one there one there obviously one there but I can't find any other fixings. It looks like that they just, it just slots in. Okay, so I've got the, the bolt outlets in there. I've got it out with a long extension because I had some screwdriver. These are bigger. So that's a T25. So the, the main fixing bolts were T25. So they're probably T20, all the smaller ones. Um, this piece just unclips. There's a little, I'm guessing so if the airbag fire, it doesn't hit you in the face, but it has this little plastic clip um, that clips into a hole up here. So you can just, that does just slide out. Like that, if you wanna get it out. So I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm gonna see if I can give this dashboard a bit of a yank and see if it moves. So I'm assuming it's just literally, it clips in. So I guess it's just gonna need a big yank. They're designed to go in easily, click in, but not come out would be my guess. So we'll give it a go. Struggling a little bit out of work out how to actually get the dashboard out. 
because it, I was just yanking it, pushing it, it just wasn't moving. And funny enough, there's a couple of videos on YouTube of people removing these dashboards. Now one video, the dashboard just disappears. No, no, you know, how to actually get it out. Uh, and no comments to, to ask. And then there's another video where he says it was a complete shit, but he didn't explain exactly what he did. So I haven't got it out yet, obviously, because it's in, but um, what I did, is I put a pick up in there, so obviously must be a little clack catch in there, and that then allows that then popped. And now we've got a bit of movement there, and the same on that side, put that up there, clipped, and up it came. So it, it's starting to move now, which is more than it was doing before. So see that it's it's moving now. So I'm just going to keep wrestling with it try and you know pull it lift it jiggle it about um if i find anything else that i need to do specifically to get it out if i get stuck i'll come back and i'll tell you okay so got that out that was a bit of a nightmare um it's locked tight on the bolt so i had to use me my big half inch gun but even that struggled uh, T. 50. It's 250. But we need some big ugga duggers on that. It just it came loose quite easily, but then because it was binding up in all of the Loctite, uh, it was a bit of a struggle. So there is actually a line on there, and there is a line on the column, so you know where you've got to line it up. I've unplugged that because that's part of the steering wheel loom and that's part of the, um, the squither loom. So it should just, it's already come loose anyway. So that's all coming out like that. There wasn't really anything um, involved. It seemed to be clipped on, I don't know whether it just, it goes down into um, the, the, the lower part down there. You can't really see it. So you kind of have to go up and then out to get it over that at the bottom, but it does just come out. So obviously I'm worried that it's gonna damage these on the way out. So I may just carefully, without moving this, take it off and do the unscrews. And I don't know, I'm gonna have a look. So that's the dashboard out. I did unscrew this, but I didn't unplug anything. I just left it dangling down. That was a bit of a nightmare, trying to get it out on your own. It hits so massive, it just hits and knocks on everything coming out. So when I put it back in, I'm gonna put something over here, because this is actually as far back as it'll go. Just put a rag over there, because it, it did, it hasn't damaged it, but it did rub on that a bit. I've just got to do airbag. It's a bolt down there. I think that's the only one I want in. Uh, there'll be electrical connection on it. I've got the spare airbag, I'll bolt that in, and then place the replacement dash back in again so you can see where it attaches on so that's the old airbag out it just slots in there are a couple of rubber grommets and then it just bolts in at the bottom and there's an electrical connector so what you do is you just carefully just using a pit you peel up the orange piece and you just it just unplugs i just need to steal the rubber grommets off of that one Put them onto this one and then bolt it back in place plug it in uh, then i'm gonna have a look at doing the airbag module i've got the replacement one here i got the old airbag ecu out in situ so there's one bolt you can get to them in there with a little i used an, uh, a quarter inch 10 mil and there's one on the front sorry one on the back two on the front i'm gonna bung this one in what you have to do is you have to unbolt it first undo it and take the nuts off, lift it out of place so you can maneuver it, so you can unplug the big connector at the back. And that allows you to then pull it out this way and unplug the second connector. So that's the way I'm gonna put it back in. This is a, an edit. I'm gonna chuck in the video now that I'm doing afterwards about the, a, uh, the airbag module. 
this is the replacement one that I got with the airbag kit and this is my old one back in I've just taken the this off and the side panels off just to unbolt it because you have to be able you have to unbolt it to get the plugs out so I had it all plugged in everything was fine but it was coming up with service airbag still on the dash now this is after everything's been replaced the pretensioners in the seat the airbags everything and it was coming up with two codes in the airbag ecu about config something about configuration um configuration issue or something like that um, and i noticed that when i looked in the live data of the replacement abs ecu uh, sorry the replacement airbag ecu it was showing a different vin uh, in there so um i was trying uh, in my hotel it does have a function where you can go into the airbag and you can program a new airbag module um but it just said it's um when you try and do that it just says it's not it's not needed or it's not it's not possible or something that was the code there that was coming up so it was telling me basically that the correct uh sdm is installed in the vehicle or the sdm and or bcm was replaced without reprogramming so i'm guessing um so yeah there were the, there were the two codes so um option option configuration malfunction and incorrect environment identifier received malfunction now this top code um that's only just come up for some reason i don't know why the only code that was coming up was that bottom one but that was coming up before i replaced the pretensioners in the seat so i was hoping it was going to go away once everything was was all put back together but it hasn't and that one's popped up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug in the original abs ecu so i keep saying abs the airbag ecu and I know all about crash codes, but I don't know whether these, it's gonna cause a problem for what I need to do. So I've plugged it back in, I've reconnected the battery. It's probably gonna tell me service airbag because you're gonna have codes in there, yeah. So we'll clear all that. No codes detected. No codes detected. Hmm. It may be that in a Vauxhall Corsa, it doesn't have such a thing as crash codes. I know that the codes in this ECU, it recognised that the airbags had gone off in presence of a um, an open circuit or something. It said open circuit, um, pretension is open circuit, driver's airbag, open circuit, steering wheel airbag. So obviously those are now not open circuit, so obviously it's a very black and white ECU and it doesn't store um, any crash codes. It doesn't know technically it's had an accident. Um, so obviously you can code, you can if you had the proper equipment, I don't. Unfortunately, things like um, Opcom and stuff, they only go up to sort of 2014 or 2016, I believe, and these are 2016 on, so um, you can't use, but well, you possibly could, but this doesn't recognise, this won't code my key, it, if it was a course of D, it would code the key, because I've got a replacement key, but this won't code it. So yeah, so that's it. So that's just uh, an interjection into the video just to show you that you don't need to replace the, air, the airbag ECU. Um, just put everything back as it should be and clear the codes. Um, you'll be good to go. Okay, so that's basically the airbag in, plugged in. So it's all ready now for the basically the dashboard to go back in again. So that's gonna be the next job. Right, so that's in, that went in surprisingly easy uh came in the came in the passenger door and it i don't know why but it it came in a lot easier than it went out um it just sort of slots in clips into place there's a couple of little tabs left spot and you just have to push it down the one thing you do have to be careful of which caught me out it which caught me out it going in coming out and going in 
this side seems to be fine but you there's a tab here can't really explain it where the center console it, the dash goes behind it and if you can see that but there's a plastic tab at the back which goes down behind the center console so you kind of have to make sure when you put it in that you go down and in behind it i managed to do it just by bending the center console down and levering it which isn't ideal but it's fine um because this wasn't sitting oops, this wasn't sitting in the right place it wasn't flat there was a gap between there and the metal piece behind so you just need to be wary of that that's one thing i'd watch out for is just make sure you get this in before you put it in properly you get this the tab behind the center console so it sits properly so at the moment that's all that's all in properly so i haven't bolted it in but it's just sat there running out of light now um so it's getting a bit dark in here so i'll carry on getting all everything back together putting the screws in basically the reverse of uh taking it out really so so that's it um and then it's just the pretensioners i just need to get the code off the pretensioners get those ordered so i can get those connected because the diagnostics were saying that the the firing mechanism for the dash for the airbags were open circuit it's obviously because they've been fired i guess they've disconnected so it's an open circuit open circuit to uh seat belts open circuit so there were codes in the ecu just one last thing when you're putting this grip back in and you've got your four bolts when i was putting it on it wasn't quite sitting flat I didn't quite understand why it was it was at an angle well underneath here for the self cancelling there's a little white tab you can't see it from here but you have to make sure that you just put i just put my finger in there found a little white tab and just push it just push the white tab in which then allows this to then sit flat and properly which obviously then allows the self council to work so without that if you screw that on you're going to be it ain't going to work this is all going to bind up and the self cancelling isn't going to work properly so just a tip i've got both seats out um to replace the pretensioners these are the replacement pretensioners uh, i got them off ebay because they'd fired because there's a gas gas cylinder in here and uh, it, when you're in an accident, this pulls this down, which then tightens the seat belt, pulls you in the seat. So this has been fired on the old one, so it all crumpled up. So I'm just putting it back in again. Uh, you have to cut the zip tie. You have to unwrap all this. And you have to take, because one goes into the seat base, which I'm assuming is a, is a um, an occupancy sensor so it senses that you're you're sitting in the seat and then the other two go to the i guess one is for the seat belt and one is for the airbag so you have to declip you have to take pull these two plastic clips out and these pull out this way and this way and you leave this with the seat and this comes off with the pretensioner so you literally just bolt it back in tidied it up i've got some cloth tape bought some cloth tape off of Amazon because most of the stuff on this car is done in this sort of cloth insulating tape rather than shiny stuff so it looks a little bit more OE so I'm just going to put a little bit around there to neaten that up um, as you can see both the seats are out and this is the plug oh, there it is uh, this is the plug here that it plugs into under each seat and this is the old the old pretension you can see it's fired so this this piece has got shorter um, you can see this cloth tape that they use which looks a little bit more OE then you've got the two plugs right so there you go it's all complete back together Okay.